welcome you once again to this channel chemistry with dr s k sundar rai so today we will discuss the various questions on permanganate metric titrations in this titrations we can estimate the amount of oxalic acid using kmno4 which is included in the ug course uh, another is a determination of strength of oxalic acid using potassium permanganate that is also included in CBSE or CHSC class 12 class. So let's start. First question is write the formula of potassium permanganate and oxalic acid. As you know, potassium permanganate is KMNO4 solutions and oxalic acid is. H2C2O4 and the structure is this potassium permanganate and the oxalic acid is like this. Next question is write the chemical equations of potassium permanganate and oxalic acid. So this is the chemical equations uh, this reactions where uh, one is the reduction house in the reduction house potassium permanganate uh, uh, react with the sulfuric acid gives one nas five nascent oxygen and in oxidation ha half reactions this oxalic acid this nascent oxygen will react with the oxalic acid and produce carbon dioxide and this is the overall reactions next question is write the ionic equations of potassium permanganate and oxalic acid so in ionic equations it is also two type two steps one is reduction half second is oxidation half in the reduction half this permanganate reacts with eight hydrogen ion and five electrons gives manganese two plus ion and in the oxidation uh, half this oxalate ion will uh, decompose to give carbon dioxide and two electrons these electrons will utilize here to balance this we have to multiply this reduction half into 2 and the oxidation half into 5 so this is the overall reactions next question is what is the oxidation state of manganese in KMnO4 and in MnSO4 the oxidation state is plus 7 as you know one oxygen is minus 2 so there are 4 oxygen so it is minus 8 and potassium is plus 1 so manganese will be plus 7 and in case of uh, manganese sulfate one oxygen is uh, minus 2 so it is minus 8 sulfur is plus 6 so manganese will be plus 2 next question is what is the oxidation state of carbon in oxalic acid and carbon dioxide the oxy uh, oxidation number is plus 3 you see one oxygen is minus 2 and four oxygen is minus 8 hydrogen is plus 1 two hydrogen is plus 2 so it will be plus 6 for two carbon atom and for one carbon atom it will be plus 3 and in carbon dioxide the oxygen state of carbon is plus 4 which substance is getting reduced and to what so permanganate ion gets reduced to manganese 2 plus ion which substance is getting oxidized and to what? So this oxalate ion get reduced to carbon dioxide. You see permanganate reduced to the manganate, uh, manganese 2 plus and this oxalic acid oxygen state from plus 3 to carbon dioxide oxygen number plus 4. What are the color of potassium permanganate and manganese sulfate solutions? So the color of potassium permanganate solution is purple in case of concentrate and in case of dilute it will be light pink and the color of manganese sulfate is colorless. Next question is what is the color of oxalic acid solutions? So the oxalic acid solutions is colorless. What is permanganometric titrations? So redox titration involving potassium permanganate as the oxidizing agent are called permanganometric titrations. So this is what types of reactions between permanganate, potassium permanganate and oxalic acid. So that is the redox reaction. As you know, this redox word is come from two words. 
that one is for reduction another is for so oxidation so it is the combination of reduction plus oxidation what do you mean by redox titrations in redox titrations both oxidation and reduction reactions takes place simultaneously during titrations one will get oxidized and at the same time the other reactant will get reduced also called redox reactions here you see potassium permanganate this potassium permanganate is reduced to manganese sulfate and oxalic acid is oxidized to carbon dioxide so it is a simultaneously so that's why it is called redox reactions which is an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent in the reactions between potassium permanganate and oxalic acid so potassium permanganate act as a oxidizing agent and oxalic acid act as an reducing agent as you know which substance is reduced that is an oxidizing agent here potassium permanganate is reduced that means potassium permanganate is a oxidizing agent and oxalic acid is oxidized that means it is a reducing agent what is the formula and basicity of oxalic acid the formula of oxalic acid is coh whole 2 and since it is a hydrated salt there is two water is attached to here the basicity of oxalic acid is 2 that means it is a dibasic acid means a, there is two hydrogen can be replaced and also it is a dicarboxylic acid because it is there is a two coh group the two carboxylic acid is joined here so that is a dicarboxylic acids next question is in the titration of potassium permanganate versus uh, oxalic acids what is the indicator used a very important questions there is no indicator used here this is because potassium permanganate is as itself is indicator so there is no need another indicator or another external indicator why potassium permanganate act as a self indicator because very dilute solutions of potassium permanganate that is 0.01 ml of 0.02 molar imparts a pale pink color to 100 ml water so very dilute color solutions can impact color that's why it can use as a indicator so how does potassium permanganate act itself as an indicator answer is in the presence of dilute sulfuric acid potassium permanganate reacts with the reducing agent that is oxalic acids when all the reducing agents have been oxidized the excess of potassium permanganate is not decomposed and impact the pink color to the solutions what is the end point in the in kmno4 solution titrations from the colorless to permanent light pink what happens at the end point the kmno4 titrations this oxalate ion completely oxidizes to carbon dioxide whereas permanganate ion is reduced to manganese ion mn2 plus ion the excess of potassium permanganate is not decomposed and impact pink color of the solutions why dilute sulfuric acid is used in kmno4 solution titrations because kmno4 solutions act as a good oxidizing agent in acidic medium if it is not used that means if you will not use the acid it may be reduced to manganese dioxide giving a brown precipitate so if you will use acid if you will carry out this reaction in acidic medium so it will be um, reduced to manganese sulfate that means the oxidation state changes from plus 7 to plus 2 but if you will not use this acid medium then this potassium permanganate will reduce to manganese dioxide that means the oxidation state will be from plus 7 to plus 4 so which is a brown precipitate which will interfere the test that's why we have to use so the sulfuric acid sufficiently in kmno4 titrations a brown precipitate occasionally observed why already we have discussed the same questions it is due to the incomplete amount of dilute sulfuric acid the incomplete reductions of potassium permanganate result in the formation of brown color precipitate that is manganese dioxide that water Can we use the dilute HCl or dilute nitric acid instead of dilute sulfuric acid in KMR4 titrations? Give reason. No, we cannot use HCl or dilute HNO3 because dilute HNO3 is an oxidizing agent and HCl 
is oxidized to chlorine by K-4 solution. That's why we cannot use. So we should use only dilute sulfuric acid in K-4 titrations. Why do we heat oxalic acid solutions containing sulfuric acid up to 50 to 60 degree in a permanganate titrations? In cold, the reaction is very slow. We heat the oxalic acid solutions to increase the rate of the reactions. By heating, the solutions will have more energy than the energy required for activation energy. So if you will not heat it, the reaction will proceed, but it will take long time. It is a slow process. To increase the rate of the reactions, we have to heat it. A burette used for becomes light brown in color. How do we clean it? Sometimes you have seen the when you are using this potassium permanate, after using that one, if you will not wash it, after some days that will the color will be brown. So if such things happen, how to remove this brown color? How to clean this brown color? So the answer is it can be washed well in your oxalic acid solutions, then with water, then this brown color will be removed. Why burette with the rubber pinch cock should not be used in k for titrations particularly? This is because k for attacks rubber. That's why you cannot use this rubber pinch cork burette. I think you have learned something, you have learned some new things and you will understand the things, uh, this uh, permanganometric titrations. So if you think it is useful or you receive some new things from this, then I hope you will like this channel, you will like and subscribe this channel to get the notifications on the future video, video of different concepts of chemistry. So. Thank you. This is for today.